All right, so we are back, and we got uh, Jund up on the deck today. Um, it is requested by one of my friends in the area. He's uh, recently picked it up, so he wants to play it. Sorry. He's upgraded my subscription as well, which is pretty sweet. That way we can play all the decks in modern now. All right, so uh, let's get this deck on the stream decker. That way we can make sure everybody can see it. It is good to go. All right, so in here we got the uh, Baron Moor to do some cycling because we got red and sixes. Uh, we got three black leaves, one blood crypt, two blood stains, two forests, a mountain, two nurturing peatland, two overgrown tombs, two ravines, one stomping ground, two swamps, one tranquil thicket, and four burdens. We've got the two pushes, four inquisitions, two thoughtsies, four bolts, two hex drinkers, one spell bomb. One Bob, I'm very uh, interested on the One Bob. Uh, we've seen a lot of lists actually just go down to zero at this point. A uh, couple of oozes, we got three of them. And then we got four Goys, two Trophies, three Ren and Six, three Lilies, one Tracker, one Culligans, and three Blood Braids. Over on the sideboard, we've got two Surgicals, two Brutalities, two Engineers, two Ley Lines, two Ooths, one Bailoff, one Finks, and three Fulminators. I find the two Ley Lines kind of interesting. Usually I'm on the idea of uh, zero or four, but we'll see how that plays out. So let's jump into this league. I am officially done with classes for the summer, which means I have like two weeks off, <laughs> three weeks off before my next bet one starts up. But it's kind of nice to be done and over with. It was, uh, class was dragging real hard, I gotta tell you. But did well on my final exam, so I should have a uh, pretty strong grade. Okay, okay, we have no threat. But we're gonna be able to rip their entire hand apart. Let's see how this pans out. It's kind of risky because we don't have a threat and we kind of need a threat in order to make this work, but we'll see how it plays out. Okay, spell snare is irrelevant for our hand right now. Path and force. Let's take force. Pass it over. We're just gonna rip that hand apart. I right, they got an opt. Kind of irrelevant. Let's take the path though. That way we can land this ooze next turn. Well, kind of. They have spell snare. Hmm. Uh, let's take the sculptor. Because if we take the sculptor, we're not got too much going on. Then we can go thought seize into ooze. If we don't get a black source, if we get a black source. We could go uh, lily. They've got one unknown. Let's see if it's something we care about. Let's go Lily. Okay. If we uptick, we can discard the Lily. So they still got a spell snare and a path in hand.
trophy. Let's uptick again. I think I'm gonna pitch the trophy. Spell snare, so they still got path. Let's just pass. Wanna hold up Culligan's command? Oh, I'm dumb. I don't I can't hold up Culligan's command. <laughs> We could shock and scavenging ooze. I mean, sca a shock and overgrown to an uptick lily, discard the ooze, and then call against it back and then cast it. Not against that. There goes the path. Let's see if this resolves. We're gonna return a creature and make them discard a card. Let's run that out and I'll pass it over. What a bummer. Okay. I think this game is slipping away. What is up? My chat is uh, messing up. But what's up, Covert Killer? And yeah, Blood Raid could save it, Brown Rice. I would be pretty excited for Blood Raid off the top. Take out Tefri. And then see what we get from that. But uh, see if we're lucky. We're not lucky. Okay. Well, let's bolt this Tefri. And we can hold a push for the Colonnade. couple followers in between streams that's pretty sweet do you want to see humans I'm fine to play humans I am not the most experienced in the deck but I'd be happy to play it if you want to send me a list list you want just uh send me a link of it and i can download it and we'll play it after this one all right we'll dodge hogak no problem I actually haven't seen much Hogak online, which is pretty interesting. Uh, 
Alrighty, I've got it. Surgical or Liliana? How rude. We like Liliana. Alright, we'll spellbond them, draw the card, see what we get. Cool, cool, we got a land. Raging Ravine, sweet. I'm good with however you have the deck list uh, drawn up, so. and we've got two threats on board. That's going to be a pretty good Narset for them. Let's see what they find. That's a path. Get in there. Hopefully, they don't have a snap path. But let's see if they do. Because if they have a path snap path, that'd be pretty bad for us. There should be nothing left. Yep, nothing left. Uh, you should be able to see the list if you click on the deck list uh, for the stream decker. This list runs just one bob. I will snag it and throw it in the chat. I thought the double swing at Narsa would have been low value because they could just let that go and hold a path for another turn. Michaela says hi. <laughs> This would be for six. Do we want to kill a Teferi? Probably. Otherwise, they can run away with the game. I 
It might have been obviously incorrect not to kill it, but... Ooh, that field of ruins is going to be pretty bad for us. For some reason, I thought we had a uh, uh, blood crypt. Can't crack the clue this turn since we can't draw unless we can kill the Narset, but I think we're better off swinging to the Tefri, take that off the board. And we'll just crack the clue on their turn. Otherwise, it would have got a draw, bounced the tireless, would have been a whole mess. It's a bit awkward. Well, that's happening. Let's drop the goif. Pass it over. We'll cycle the thicket on their turn. Run and six is not bad. Another one. Let's see if this resolves. Pick off the snap and hit them down to one. Nice. So I know I want to bring in the collectives. They seem pretty sweet here. <clears throat> Any uh, recommendations there, Dan, on what you want to see cut in this matchup and whatnot? Since it's your requested deck, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to see if there's anything you, your thoughts are on what should be cut or not before I make any decisions.
you don't like Tracker? Tracker seems great in this matchup, doesn't it? You get to, it's a threat all by itself that can draw you additional cards, generate a ton of value that way. They, it's like a pretty much a must answer, isn't it? The Fatal Pushes are pretty much just there for the man lands. You want to cut like two bolts for two brutalities? Or did you want to cut, bring in anything else? Yeah, but a lightning rod for removal is a good thing, right? Like, honestly, yeah, Fulminator seems a little too narrow. It's not unreasonable because it hits the man lands, and we can bring it back. But I think, yeah, I think I'd be fine with the way we have it set up right now. Let's run it like this. This hands Bob can get out of if they deal with it. Or I think I'm good to keep this. Is a, this is not as interactive because we're not ripping anything out of their hand. But a turn two Bob, if they path it, we're gonna get our mana fix, and then if we draw any land at all, we can play the Lily. So. Cool. And we'll probably grab the stomping ground here. That way we have the green in case we draw the red and six. Could wait on the Bob and Inquisition them first. I don't think I'm opposed to that. They're going to force it, pitching to Supreme. We're also okay with that. They must have really valued what was in their hand. We value it that much. Why don't we take another look? Okay. So they got a snap and an island. Seems odd that they would force to me. Yeah, their force seemed really aggressive. All right, so they got Island and Snap in hand. So why don't we, if we, if we run out Liliana, they're gonna purge it. We could Inquisition them. Then they'd have to cast it, they can target the purge, and then we'll, we can push it in the next turn. This way we don't lose our Liliana to nothing, and we won't lose our Bob either. What uh? What made it less than uh, stellar? Was it just the, the card itself not doing as much as you wanted it to, or just not uh, getting there? Like, so I'm curious.
sure. So I'll bolt that. Let's go Lily. A little uptick, bend the Inquisition. I'll pass it over. Let's run out spell bomb. Bob. I want to keep upticking here. I know we're losing a really good card with the trophy. But getting Lily to ultable area would be pretty sweet. Yeah, it seems like Tracker and Ren just seems amazing together. Maybe it's too much quality on paper and not actuality. We are going to hit your graveyard opponent. We won't get a draw, but you don't get a purge. so painful. Oh, we actually can't cast the lily either. Um, I guess I'm just going to make them sack. I don't really like it. It's really a bummer we didn't hit a land there. I would have really appreciated a land. Or a Ren and Six. Also would have appreciated that. Okay. Lands. Let's uptick that. Pitch that. Um, cycle the tranquil. Probably should have cycled first, right? See all my options before pitching stuff. It's a mistake. Okay. It's cool. We didn't want extra threats anyway. You know, we get repeated uh, planeswalkers, and then uh, they're just drawing all the lands. Woot, woot. So we can go Goyf. Uptick, pitch lily, swing. You know, Bob technically is supposed to be lackluster right now, but uh, right now he's doing great work. <laughs> Pretty bad push. But I'm gonna. Is there anything. I guess I'm gonna hold it to make like a mentor. Not a mentor, snapcaster, I guess, dead. Because I can run it out block. But I guess if they have a snapcaster. No, let's just uptick. Alright. Because if they have a snapcaster, they're gonna get path in away. If, and if they have a mentor, we're not gonna, we're gonna be able to just down tick Lily to kill it anyhow.
GG, Kortan. Look, I, Bob, I have never actually really played Bob. I played, like, Paper Jun, like, twice, borrowing it from my friend Jay. But, like, other than that, I've really not played this deck. Yeah, a lot of lesser off bop. Hmm, okay. Can do this. Kinda wish one of those pushes was hand disruption, but you know, we can't have everything. We're not greedy. We're gonna kill that though. Should we be pushing that? I think we should, right? Because push is dead against more things in their deck. Yeah, yeah, good call, Bryce. We're on the same wavelength. I got an EE. -E. Let's run out Bob. Run out this Catacombs. Pass it over. This is Zusa. Pretty sure I'm gonna go fetch up a Blood Crypt. Shock myself. And let's push that as well. Sorry, I'm uh, playing a little bit ahead of you guys, and I probably should be waiting. So here I'm thinking we should just Inquisition first, see what they got to work with. And then we can just go from there um, and see if we should be holding up the trophy or running out the goif. My guess is that we're going to run out the goif. What do you think, Dan? He shouldn't be able to do anything on five. Okay. Okay, they've got double Karn, Cavern, and Prime Time. is whether or not this thicket's better as a redraw. It very well may be better as a redraw. Um, but we'd be closer to ravine mana as well. That's a big factor. Next turn, they're going to go use Karn, go fetch up something. We can bolt to take out the Karn, and we can trophy the Sanctuary to take him off another turn. Yeah, I think I'm going to run off the thicket. 
And we'll just hit him for two. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to cast Blood Bear either. That's, that's uh, another reason for us to play it. What could they want to go fetch up? E E, okay. Okay, we can, like I said, we can trophy EE e. is still gonna be pretty worthwhile um, they technically if we if we use uh, assassin trophy I think they only play for us so that has value too if we do go about it that way um, take them off the ability to get to two mana let's do that I think we're going to do that. Run out the Peatland. We're going to use Goyf, take out Karn, hit them for two, hold up Bolt for the other Karn they're going to play. You like smacking with the Ravine? If we smack with the Ravine and they have a land, they're going to play their Titan. Where if we use Trophy, we can hold up and then not get Titan next turn. We could hit him for five and just put Karn to one as well. It's effectively doing the same thing because they've got a tick up on it. They've got nothing to tick up on. Yeah, I really don't want to get a Titan cast against us. And if we use the trophy, it also takes them off of the EE on two unless they have another land in hand, right? So it seems to me like the best line here is for us to go trophy, hit the Sanctuary, take them off that mana, Swing, send Bob to Karn, and then send Goyf to them. Hold up Bolt, run out the Peatland, use the Bolt on their turn to take out their Karn, and then we'll do a redraw, right? So let's let's do that. Amulet, sure. Let's do a redraw. Run in six. Yeah, I probably should have uh, done the draw step assassin's trophy in case they had the forest in hand like they have they did have here. So that potentially would have put them off of the land. So that that was that would have been the correct call. Um, we can just bolt them though. Our turn, get the land, activate um, ravine and swing for lethal. That was good. Um, I want to bring in the Fulminators for sure. What do you guys think? I'm not as impressed with the spell bomb here or the hex drinkers. I'm not sure if we would need them. Those are the cards I'm leaning to, uh, boarding in and uh, taking out. Thoughts?
I'm not sure if brutality is good enough. I don't think it is. And there is potential that we should be bringing in Collector Oof just because they have the Karns. But it's really it. It does stop their EE -E, though. That and that has value. Like, should we be trimming the ooze, two oozes here for the two oofs? Okay, I'm going to go forward with that. Oh, this hand is a bit light on anything that's going on. We get one redraw, we're on the draw. I really don't think this is good enough. Trophy is pretty good. I just don't think this is good enough. It's just too land heavy. This feels much better. Keep this. We'll ship the mountain. Keep this. Let's get a, we have a black cleave, get a stomping ground and have all of our mana bases covered. <clears throat> I think we want to run out the run in six. Let's uptick on our land and send it back. Man, if we get the Fulminator, the Simic Growth Chamber, how great is that going to be? Those are like dreams coming true. The Oof's going to uh, stop the activated abilities of their uh, artifacts. Let's just grab a swamp here. Or are you saying, what is it doing this match at the, that I brought it in? I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to, one, stop the potential car lock if we can just run it out there. So if they want to do it, they got to get rid of the... Uh, the oo first and it's gonna be hard for them to get rid of it because of things like ee right there so right now we're gonna run out the oof and they're they should have a pretty hard time getting rid of it let's shock in this overgrown tomb run out the oof run out the goif We'll uptick. Probably should have ran out the Bloodstained Mire, cracked it, and got another Lance. That's, but it would have been um, a lot of damage. Well, an extra one damage that we'd be doing because we'd be having to grab the uh, Overgrown Tomb from our deck and shock ourselves. Which probably doesn't matter. I 
think Liliana is where we want to go here. Because we can go Liliana and keep upticking. Pitch that. Yeah, if you want to see Eldrazi Tron later, um, I'm fine with that. We got humans lined up, so Eldrazi Tron after that's absolutely fine with me. And that could be the three experts, and I don't have a uh, class right now, so absolutely cool to get some more games in. I should be able to do a full three leagues uh, tonight, um, and depending on how fast it go, maybe a fourth, but probably just three. I think three will put me till around midnight. They've got a whole lot of mana. Let's get a draw in. Liliana. We could uptick and then drop the other Liliana and uptick again to put them down to one card. The card in their hands probably. Uh, too bad we don't have anything to retrace either. If we had like uh, a Thoughtseize or an Inquisition in hand, that'd be pretty sweet. All right, well, we're definitely gonna be upticking here. It's Karn. I think I'm just going to go crazy with this and run out the other Lily as well. Keep this one uptick. Get the peatland back. Run that out. Let's run Goyf and hold back the oof. Do they have the Titan? I imagine they do. Yep. Field of Dead. That's going to be a fun addition for them. We have to bounce it and play some more and get some more triggers with it. Not too bad. We're in our second match and we are undefeated currently. We can get rid of the Titan by alting Renin 6 and we can go Bolt Bolt. That doesn't seem bad. We've got another bop here, it looks like.
Mm -mm. So we're going to send both bolts. So bolt that tight and Oh, you know what we should have done? After Alta with Ren and Six, we should have ran out Ren and Six, ticked it up, grabbed the land back so we can go fetch up the mountain from our deck, and then we would have a Ren and Six on four, and then, yeah, that way we could have it on four so that we would be better off. But I guess we have, they have so many zombies that we can only block one of them, so it would have been kind of like sending ours to death. Um, I, don't have, I think I'm going to uptick here, but I'm not a big fan of it. No, because I want to keep both Tracker and Ren and Six, so I don't think I'm going to uptick. They have a land in hand, right? So I think we're just passing. All right, so the question is, um, Eldrazi Tron with a small wishboard in the sideboard, Karn, great creator, it is great for its passive ability, but what if we kept a small handful of cards to fetch for and have a more open sideboard? Um, yeah, like, that's not unreasonable. That's kind of like what... Um, that's what... Um, the deck we're actually going against, Amulet Titan, that's what they do, right? They pretty much just focus on having just a couple high-impact cards to go fetch up instead of having more uh, answers. And I think that's a fine way to go about it. Um, it just kind of depends on, like, what are you going to tr start trimming? Because that's the hardest part, right? You, ha you have to figure that the more you trim from it, the harder it's going to be. Um because every single card you cut they're, they're all the cards that's in and out because it's usually between like 8 and 10 cards that are in your side um, are they all being they're just all swinging at Ren 6 Ren Ren okay I guess we'll just block one Ren can die that's fine we got another one in hand for good reason right I guess it's good that we didn't play it out then <laughs> And I think it's one of those things where it's down to your, the meta of where you're at and what you're looking to do with the sideboard. Um, if there are some parts of your sideboard that you don't think are high enough impact uh, to dedicate that sideboard slot to, that's absolutely the right call. Uh, look at what Mono Green did. Mono Green got to the point where they're like, it's just not good enough at all. So they just cut it all together. Return the land, play out tracker, or return the land and cast bolt. Take out the Azusa in case they get uh, a land that bounces. It seems good. Taking out Azusa could potentially prevent uh, six zombies from coming on their turn, so let's do that. EE on three, sure. Now they can either kill Ren and Six or kill Liliana. They can't do both though. 
I imagine they'll kill Ren and Six. That's much worse. Yep. And unfortunately, we don't want to give up our. We don't want to give up our oof because that's keeping us in the game. A fair bit. Let's run out this tracker. We don't need to bolt anything, I don't think. Let's just get a clue token. And we'll uptick again. Now, if we can get back to our turn with Lily, that's going to be pretty awesome to be able to alt them. Don't have anything crazy, opponent. Ooh, just a snow-covered forest. All right. All right. They're swinging everything at Lily. No matter what, I think we're just going to let Lily take four. I don't want to give up the oof for the tracker right now. Bloodbraid Elf is pretty sweet. Cast it on them to cast it. Get it in the graveyard in case we wanted to retrace that back. And we'll take up Lily. This is a grind. They can break this grind at any time if they just draw a Titan too. <laughs> All right, if they want to swing with all the zombies again, this time we'll go Blood Braid on one and Goif on the other and let Lily go down to one. Sure. That does prevent us from swinging, which is unfortunate. Well, I guess not. We can be this old... No, we can't. Because if you want to retrace, then we can't activate it. But it does let us swing. Kinda. If we swing, they're gonna. Oh man. If we swing with the tracker, they can then swing the uh, tribe elders and the zombie in. Um. Mm -mm. Let's run it out. Yeah, I'm just going to make some more clues. We can't activate them because of the oof, but they're going to try to do anything they can to get rid of this oof. So once it's gone, we'll have a bunch of clues we can crack. We can activate this ravine though and start swinging. Jump City. Like 
opponent's uh, MTGO is uh, having some issues, so they're going to quickly restart to their client. Alrighty, so I'm going to update our thing. So we got Jun, Humans, and Etron up for tonight. Looks like the opponent's back. Alrighty, let's go ahead and bolt a zombie. Well, if we bolt the the zombies, we're able to clear the way to where we can eventually start swinging, right? Or is the damage to them just more worthwhile because they're at 15? That's not good. we would really appreciate a trophy We've got a problem. We're probably dead. We really just basically needed them not to draw Titan. Because, uh... Let's see where they send it. Potentially, we want to be bringing that in. So Liliana's the one getting swung by the prime time. I think, do we want to throw the tracker and the goif in front of the prime time to kill it? We are still dealing with an army of zombies after that. And we lose both of ours. Not good. I think we're just gonna let the lily go. That's fair, they do make chump blockers every turn. Can't double bolt them. We can bolt our, so as soon as we as soon as we uh, get rid of our oof, we lose the game, is the thing. So, like, we get rid of oof, they activate their EE, take out our uh, goif, and they can take out our tracker, and then they can just swing in and kill us. We get a couple draws, though. We'd have to hit something like this turn, but I guess that's the only way we're winning, I guess, right? So... 
seems pretty bad. I should have just blocked it if we're doing this, but... There goes the EE. -E. Uh, that's that's fine. We're just doing a draw anyway. Let's see if we hit. Yeah, that's not good enough. I don't think. I think we're dead. There's too much power on the board, so let's move on. Yeah, I try to reduce that as much as possible, but they said that you you pretty much can't do anything about that, um, no matter what the delay is going to be there. So, I think the Plague Engineer being a three drop is really hard, but it is. Um, we'd have to get both of them in order to sh make the zombies go away, which makes it so I don't really think that's worth it. So let's just run this back. No lands means we're shipping that. Okay. This hand's good enough for us to keep. As much as I want that blood bread, I think that's the card we're shipping. The rest of the cards I, I just basically want to have. Yeah, their top decks are pretty strong. Lands in a prime time now. Alrighty. Let's run out the ravine and run pass it back. I mean, the fact that they drew blank doesn't mean their top decks weren't better. They were just waiting for a way. Um, but, yeah, they, they were just waiting for a threat. As soon as they landed a Titan, we were going to lose. we want to uptick right because they can do tribe scout to three play their land then uh, up tribe scout again for five so if we run out the um if we run out veil they're not going to be able to stop us and they'll have to pitch one of their more relevant cards And we can pitch the peatland here.
All right, so they have Ghost Core, they have Vesuva, and so the cards in their hand are Titan and a Ghost Core to left. I agree, Colbert. We uh, should have gone that route. It would have been a better line, seeing as how we weren't going to be getting through the fields because every single land drop they were going to get was going to give them more tokens anyhow. They got two cards in hand. They got a Ghost Quarter and a Prime Time. If we uptick we could pitch the oof no we'll yeah pitch the oof and then run out the fulminator hold it for block sack take out one of their lands and then liliana will be able to uptick again and we'll be able to keep them off seems okay Because they've got to pitch the Ghost Quarter, right? They're not going to pitch their Titan. Oh, they did pitch the Titan. Wow. They go fetch something up, we can get rid of it with Lily. So do they do that? They do, that's interesting. I wonder why they would go fetch something up if we're just gonna get rid of it. Okay, they're actually noticing the, the misclick. So they're just going to get the Tormod's Crypt so they don't lose something. All right, we're down. So let's go land. Bolt Karn. Uptick. And we'll pass it over. They can't get to six mana and have a Titan, so we'll hold off on the Fulminator here. Because then we can block and ult them. Go for it. Sure. We're going to leave them with two lands. That's fine. We're going to put this in the pile, this in a pile, and this in a pile. Separate it like that. Let's start swinging.
We would love another threat. We got one. Two lands in hand. Okay. All right, they can only have five mana next turn, so we'll hold off on Fulminator one more turn. After damage heroes, take out that Simic Growth Chamber. Do they have a blocker? A bog, that's pretty good. Trophy for the instant? Yeah! <laughs> That was a good game. All right, two and O. Oh. Okay, not the best hand, but this is a pretty grindy hand, so let's keep this. Okay, I'm a bit of a believer in the uh, in the Renin Six. We can do some shenanigans with that card. I gotta tell you. Looting, looting, looting. All right, it's Venge Vines. This is Hogak. So we definitely got to get this ooze out. I want to shock us because I want to get the... I want to make sure we have more green mana. All right. Let's see if this turn two ooze is good enough. Not a super explosive hand, so it might be good enough. Unless they've got like Stitcher, Stitcher, Stitcher Carrion. Satyr's fine, because that should mean they can't cast their Hogak. Oh, they're going old school. Alright, let's go grab a forest. Do we eat the Venge Vines or the Lootings? Gotta be the Venge Vines, right? Do we bolt the Seder? I think we can just respond to the bolt. So I think we're okay. If they cast another creature and they have Hogak, we can uh, potentially have Hogak. We'll bolt the... Uh, Seder. All right, we cannot stop that blood gas from coming back. Which means we should bolt this Seder. Just in case they have the 
um, the Hogak in hand, and they don't have another creature here, this would stop them from doing it. They had another creature. Okay. There's Hogak. Well, you're a turn too late. <laughs> All right, we can make our uh, ooze pretty large here. And I think that's where we have to be on um, to just get it larger than this Hogak. We can probably take one hit from it. There's not enough creatures. Should... Hmm. Run in six, shoot the supplier, get the trigger, and then we wouldn't be able to do the spell bomb this turn if we went that line. And we can't. Uh, uh, uh. You think so? You don't want to get rid of the, the, the looting. It seems so much annoyance for us. Okay, I'll do it. Oh, you're saying you wanted, uh, I should have um, not played out the Baron more and just get, uh, upticked and got the Vernon Catacomb and got another green source? Yeah, I think that would have been the better line. black Ah, oh, they're gonna recast their hog. I can get Vengevine back. Huh. 
<laughs> I think I'm going to take out the blood gas. They can sack it. We can eat it. I think I want to run out the spell bomb. Hmm, Grim Crawlers are pretty good for them. Can at the very least eat the other one though. If we can survive this turn, we should be able to start blocking that Hogak. We're most likely going to have to chump the Goyf in front of the feeder. Because they can cast Grave Crawler two more times, so that feeder is going to be like a 5-5. Five, five, Six six. Getting nasty over there. We're going to be taking eight from that. We're going to block the Vengevine, block this, take the eight. I think they're dead. They can't bring back their Venge Vine to block, and Blood Gas and Grave Crawler can't block. So we're just gonna eat their Venge Vine and kill them. <laughs> this is how we win. funny all 
Alrighty, so I'm thinking surgicals and ley lines for sure. Uh, Plague Engineer seems pretty good, right? We can get it, we name Zombie with it, we can take out a good portion of the things. A name, and then we can name Vampire as well and take out the blood gas. Um, is Bailoff worth it just for the fact that it can uh, block down the majority of their creatures? I don't think the Fulminators are worth it. Maybe Finks as well. So these are the cards that I'm thinking. These are the for sures, these are the maybes. I don't think we're on the plan to grind them out or the, to build up the Hex Drinkers. I think Culligan's command is going to be too slow as well. What else should we be cutting? Okay, so Ley Lines, Extractions, and Engineers. Okay, so we don't need the Thanks for the Bail Off, but we got to cut two more cards. Lily does seem pretty bad. So let's get rid of those. Get rid of these, bring all this in. We got an extra spot, so why don't we bring in the uh, the Bailoff as well. I think Bailoff being able to block the majority of the creatures doesn't seem bad. Well, maybe not. Maybe the Thanks is more relevant because it can block twice. It can block a large feeder twice where Bailoff's not going to be able to. So let's try that. We get to ink them twice, but the rest of our hand is offline. I don't think we can keep this. This seems fine. It doesn't seem great at all. This hand doesn't seem great either. Should we just be mulling this as well? We've got no interaction here at all. No graveyard interaction. Like I feel like we just die to any like, if they're going to any speed at all to their hand, we're just done. Yeah. I think we're going to have to mull for a faster hand. Because um, if we kept this hand, we're probably going to lose either way. Right? Like, we're not keeping up with them. Okay. We'll keep this. Because we've got a ley line. Let's keep this. We could pitch a mountain for sure. I want to keep the Inquisition and the Fatal Push. So I'm thinking mountain and the Peatland. Will ship? Yeah, cool. Because we can run out the Ley Line and then do a turn one Inquisition and hopefully just take them off of uh, anything they would have. They're down to four cards, too. So realistically, they're going to be down to, like, two cards, because after they play a land and we Inquisition them, it's going to be over. They have the nature's claim. Oh my gosh! They're so good! Alright, they literally have the steam vents left. We just need to draw a threat, folks. We just need one threat. Okay, we can take care of that. It's not a problem. Alright, blood braid. We'll do it the slow way. We're just gonna get we're just gonna get rid of this. I don't even want to deal with it. It's gone. Goodbye. Grave crawler. Alright, let's go get a 
stomping ground. We got a bob. No worries, humorous. I can repeat myself. Um, basically, as far as that goes, because you were, you were asking about whether or not uh, you should be cutting, um, you should be cutting more cards in the sideboard so you can accommodate it. And I'm gonna thought seize them. Um, my thought on that is that you have to, um, if you want to trim more cards out of the sideboard for it, that's absolutely fine, but you're going to have to decide what you're going to be cutting because usually you're having to dedicate eight to nine cards or eight to 10 cards in your sideboard to, um, the current great, a great creator plan. So if you want to move further and further away from that, um, it's okay, but you're going to run into a, a problem, I think, um, where you trim so much of it like is it going to even be worthwhile to have anymore you know i'm gonna get rid of this because like mono Grintron's done with it right they they all, all together cut the great creator plan But freeing up more cyborg slots, I think, is the correct call um, right now. Just because you you have to have so many set aside for yourself because it, it is out of control. Um, you have to have a lot of side mainly because of Hogak, right? Like, there's just so many. You just need to have so many answers to them. We're going to stop on their draw step, and we're going to surgical them, I think. Eldrazi Tron before Karn? I think you're going to have to go back to, like, 2017 or early 2018 to see, like, those lists. Oops, I was not supposed to pay life there. I'm so used to not having black mana. They have a land in hand. We definitely should have two more life, my mistake. Yeah, and if you want to copy what uh, Amulet uh, Titan does, where they only have a few cards they're really searching for, um, but they're all very, very high impact cards. Woot woot, beat the Hogak Menace. Run it back. We're doing great. This is fantastic. You need help? I'm your leader. What do you need help with? You have 82 cards and you need 75? You want to send me? I, I'm more than happy to try to help you cut down. What are what are we? What deck are we talking about? Oh.
Oh, this is an interesting deck. So you're playing this like control shell by um Okay. Hmm. Think we're okay with this. I'll take a look at that deck a little bit more in between the matches to see if there's um, anything I could possibly recommend uh, for your approach mill deck. Let's get a blood crypt and bolt that hierarch. Not this goif. Cool, cool. Let's take out their ooze, run out our own ooze, and beat them for three. Play it though. Let's swing. Um, yeah, I guess because I've never played this approach um, mill deck. Um, is this for something you play at your F and M, or is this something you play um, you, you want to bring to a tournament? Like, what's the idea behind this? You want to bring it to the Milwaukee GP? Okay. Well, we don't need to eat it to trade, so let's just trade. Before that, let's see if we can cycle this. Let's just trade there. Run out another goif. And it's on. So, to me anyway, this seems like a very fun deck, uh, like a good pet deck that you can bring, I think this, um, that you can bring to like an f and I, I will be honest with you, I think you're going to have a rough time bringing this deck to like a GP. If you're okay with that, um, just and you're prepared for that, that's gonna be okay. But it's just just be aware that it, it, you are gonna have a rough time. It's it's not the easiest thing um, to bring something like this to a GP because this is a very non-meta deck for one. And then the other thing you're gonna be dealing with as a result of that is uh, not blocking um, due to being a non-meta deck is that 
you're gonna you're any advice I give you is just from what I'm seeing, okay? Yeah, like minusing Karn, um, you're not always going to be just getting an I win button. The I win button's really only there with Lattice. Um, I do find that when you have some other options, it's pretty reasonable. Um, swing. Like, it's, sometimes it's just like a value or it's stopping them. And I think that's pretty good too. Like, you know, finding those uh, hate pieces to stop them, that's usually enough. Or getting like, you know, the, those pieces so you can keep building yourself or protect yourself so you can keep, stay in the game, that's okay. Um, or doing a soft lock, that's also fine. They're gonna cord for four, which means they're most likely going to get a resto. No, a Vanifar. Okay. We're good with that. We'll get that. That dies. Oh, they have the Force. Okay. So they should be able to chain to kill us. But usually that chain revolves around Renegade Rallyer from a one drop. So Ooze should be able to stop them. Yeah, if you're only seeing a couple cards that you ever want to fetch up, the Ballista, the Bridge here, the Coating, and the Worm Coil, um, then I think that that may be the way you want to go and test it to see what you like. Um, and not having those cards in it to clog it up uh, in a sense because otherwise you are just going to have them. Th there are some cards that I'm seeing that um, I never really bring in that much and I have thought about that same thing. But I try, I, I've taken a step back as well and gone, hey, I haven't gone against the decks where I did want to bring that in. And then if I am bringing something in, is it a card that um, it's only narrow enough? Like uh, for me, Crucible was a card that is getting so narrow that... Um, I don't really have to worry about it anymore. So I've thought about just taking that all together out of my sideboard, whether I'm on Mono Green or on um, Eldrazi Tron. Um, as much as I like it for, you know, the fact of blowing up our lands, more often than not, it's kind of a waste of a wish uh, when you do go fetch it up. So I imagine they should go get Scrib Ranger. Because it should be Scrib Ranger, untap, go get Rallier, but they can't go that line. That line is dead to them. So they maybe they want to go get a. Um, yeah, there are there are a bunch. Um, I've thought about the you know, like I said, I, I I think that we have to get to the point where we have to make it as streamlined as possible. But it's hard to it's hard to make those cuts because you think about like, oh, this card would be great in this situation, or, or this card would be great in this situation. Um, another card that I feel is really useful out of the ones you named is also Trinisphere, um, especially right now with Twiddlestorm for uh, floating around. I would want that in there. Opponent is thinking pretty hard. They've got a hard decision here. Okay, they're going to do that and they're going to untap. That's fine. That's what we expected. for four might be dead resto 
Blink the Scrub Ranger. Oh man. I'm like so excited that they won, but I'm like so sad. <laughs> oh, they got a deceiver. A rallier. Oh, I think that was a mistake. Why did they get rally or why didn't they just go for the kill? Oh, they have another untap, that's why. <laughs> okay, now we're done. Yeah, and I mean, even if you are new to any deck, go with your gut instinct sometimes. You're the one playing it. If you're if you feel that it's more relevant in some uh, aspects, then just go for it. The only cards I really want to bring in are the Plague Engineers. And I'm thinking we take... Oh, well, we can keep a Spell Bomb. But I think we can cut the Drinkers. You just don't think we really need them. We're just trying to, like, whittle away at everything that they have. Should we bring in the Brutalities, too? Because it can be a removal. I guess oozes are lower impact right now. And we'll just bring these in and just go for as much removal as possible. I know. I'm always I'm always cutting hex drinker, but like my problem is the matches I want hex drinker are the matchups like we're going against a bunch of matchups where we have to like here i don't need to grind out to win i just need to have a threat to beat them um against hogak it's not really that relevant either because i just want to uh stop them from killing us no black source can't cast this thought seize slow hand i think we're gonna ship this Mm, high amount of interaction. Let's keep this. We'll ship the forest. No. Yes. No. No. We we're gonna want to ship the uh, mountain. That way we can use the vert and go fetch up a blood crypt. Yeah, um, a mill deck would be fun. And now, have you if you're liking the mill plan? Um, I would recommend that you do one thing or the other with this Azura's approach deck. You should either do mill or you should do an approach shell because you're kind of um, splitting it right now, and I don't think that's the way you want to go. Um, have you played the blue black mill deck? It's a pretty fun deck. Um, if you've never played it, like uh, you use like the archive traps to mill them a bunch of cards. Um, that might be the way to go if you've never played that. I would recommend trying that mill deck out first. I think there was an approach deck. Um, in modern, but it's like a control shell, and then you just win through approach. And yeah, I don't mind brewing something up, it'll be fun. Let's run out this ooze so we can have a threat. Gotcha. 
Yeah, um, do a search for like any blue black mill deck, and you should see a couple of them in the modern. It, they're not bad decks, and a lot of the decks that I tend to play seem to get crushed by it. Let's bolt this. Eat it. Run this out and swing. Now, have you, if you were uh, been off and on since uh, Return of Eldrazi block, um, have you played uh, Modern um, before jumping into this? Now, I say that because Modern's a pretty fast format. Right now, a lot of times, people are getting killed on like turn two, turn three, so it's, it's pretty crazy. invest too much to taking out all their voices because we have to save our removal for some of their other things too if we bolt now we can prevent some issues from popping up Just gonna pass. Red and six seems pretty good against them. They can tick away a lot of their creatures. That would have been a good line, Phoenix. Yeah. Ping it, kill that, and then die from state baits, and then they're left with just a uh, a one one token. So we have two trophies. I don't want to give them a land though. Yeah, you guys are definitely right on that line. Um I don't do you guys think I feel like if we give them a land they're just waiting to cast their their Renan, I mean their um their Vanifar. If we do it, we can minus on Renan six and take out the token though. I guess we're doing it. We've got another Oh man. I shouldn't have made that decision. I just saw your guys' message. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at this game. I'm getting punished so hard for my for my line right now. So, <laughs> um. If I want to keep the Ren and Six right now, I have to Assassin's Trophy 
their ice fang cordal, and then uh, give them another land to put them up to five lands. Uh. Yeah, no, I should have just taken the beat. I guess if we would have taken the beat, though, we would have lost our um, Ren and Six either way, but man. We would have been able to prevent this if I would have gone with the line you guys mentioned earlier, though, where we would have killed the token off the state base effect. I'm pretty sure I've just, um, I've, uh, valued myself out of this game. Ren and six can die because if we block, we'll lose our goif. They're playing Jace? You got a Vanifar deck? What is going on? What list are they playing? We bolt the ooze. It can't get any bigger. There's no other creature in the graveyard. If we don't take out Jace, though, we're just going to die to Jace. But if we don't get rid of the ooze, our goif is irrelevant anyhow. So let's get rid of this. <sighs> I made our life so much harder, guys. Interesting that they go for the bolt because they actually could have shrank our goif. This doesn't really matter because they're planning on chumping anyhow. one way to climb back into this game.
Okay, we're dead here. Yeah, my sequencing of this this match was not not good at all. We we messed that up. All right, let's see if I can uh, recover a little bit for this one, and see if we can end it with a four one. So my teams got three different teams heading down for Magic Fest Indie, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, so this is like, the list you just linked looks like the list of what they used to do before Karn came out. You see that they have a lot more in their cyborg. Um, I'm okay with this. Team's not doing bad at all. I think I'm going to lead off with the Baron more because I want to be able to go... Two drop, three drop, four drop, and I don't want to get uh, stuck with this um, a tap land in hand. Um, the last event we went to, uh, Blake and Andrew went to an event over the weekend, and they did not do well there. Um, in the IQ we went before that, we were uh, we had some winning ins for a top eight for an IQ, but not much else occurred, unfortunately. Um, I'm the only one that's going to be going to uh, Dallas, so. A little bummed out because I'll be by myself, but can't have it all, right? Um, and then we've got a very strong showing for Magic Fest Indy. We've got a small event this upcoming week. Yeah, Aria Flame is absolutely nuts. That card is just fantastic. So we're most likely going against uh, Bring the Light Shift here. Grab an Overgrown. Bant Soul Herder looks like a blast. It just took down a tournament, right? Or Bant Flicker. That's the deck I was supposed to play this week. Force is a bummer. Definitely wanted that Ren and Six to resolve so we can hit this Blood Braid. We use a Force Pitch to Force. Okay. Oh, you're saying this is the Soul Herder deck. Got it. Alright, well, let's bolt that and get rid of it. Alrighty. 
<laughs> yeah, I sent that message a long time ago, but I almost never see uh, the messages either, so don't feel bad. I think I just want to take the hit. The chances of getting blown up by a flicker effect is high, so I don't want to risk that. They're going to take another turn? With Time Lord? What kind of shenanigans is this? Okay, okay. What is happening? I feel like I need to be on this deck. Because I feel like my deck's just just nothing compared to this one now. They're just gonna have like infinite draws. I guess we can Inquisition them first to see if they have anything to make sure we can take out this Soul Herder. Okay, so Path, Deputy. Mm -mm -mm. I guess taking the deputy, if they path our goif, we're okay with that. And then we can trophy this so they can get rid of all the value that they're getting. I guess we'll make them discard a card and hit their soul herder. And they've still got a path in hand, we can't swing, so we'll pass it back. get their card what they get another sword this is out of control that's that fourth one what kind of crap is this we can't even play that bob <laughs> I think we have to play the Bob, but I think we're going to die. 
I'm pretty sure we're just done. That card's just way too good against us. I don't think this is even really worth it. Yeah, Engineer seems really sweet against them. They're going to, like, swing at us for two, and then we're going to get something off the top of the deck that kills us. Ah, we're dead. Okay, so we want to bring in the Engineers. Do we want to bring in the brutalities as well, just because of the extra removal? Is there any merit to bring in surgical here? I don't feel like there is, but fulminators and thinks don't seem good. Take out spell bomb and maybe the oozes. What do you guys think? Take out one spell bomb, three oozes for two engineers and two collectives. Sorry, messaging someone because they are contacting me about an event that I'm doing for work with a bunch of coworkers. This seems fine. It doesn't seem great. Can we do better than this hand right now? What do you guys think? We got four lands, so we're pretty much guaranteed to cast this uh, Blood Braid. Um, we're not going to be casting this trophy, so we're pretty much not doing anything until like turn three. Um, if they get the Rampy hand, we're going to be we're going to be just out of it. Because I'm leaning towards a mulligan right now. The upside of this hand is that the Baron Moor and the uh, Peatland is a redraw, but I'm not sure if that's really where we want to be. But it, we could uh, just go uh, lead chain up to that and then eventually just get rid of them, which doesn't seem terrible. Alright, 
I'm gonna keep it, I guess. This an activity thing keeps uh, threatening me with uh, concessions. <laughs> um, let's run out the Baron more. No, let's go run out Verdant. I'm gonna go fetch up uh, a Blood Crypt. Six. That's great. Red and six seems awesome against them. <laughs> See if it sticks. That's a fair point, Phoenix. I probably should not be doing it so then I can uh, cycle it, right? And then uh, be bringing it back with Red and six. So. Go get a swamp and we'll uptick. Sure. Seems fine. We'll take down and take it out. Oracle. Ephemerate's gonna be kind of annoying. I think because we're not planning on using cola guns because they have ephemerate. Um, we're just gonna cycle this. We'll draw. So I'm thinking here we're going to minus on the codal. They're going to respawn. Use that. And I imagine they'll use Ephemerate. And then we are going to Coligan's command. Make them discard and shoot this for two. Nice. Pretty sweet there. And they also discarded the force, which is awesome. Maybe I'm not valuing the ooze here enough in this matchup or the spell bomb. It seems uh, actually better than I thought. Let's brutality two modes. We'll minus and we'll make them discard a card. to blow this trophy here because otherwise they're going to get an insane amount of value. Okay, they're going to concede. Yeah, let's bring back the ooze and the bomb. I know you're not going to like me for this, but I think I'm going to take up those Hex Drinkers.
Do I want to take out the blood braids? What about doing it like this? Bring back in the bomb, bring the oozes in, take out the drinkers and the blood braid. I don't think ley line's correct. I think ley line's a little too much for them, right? Like, I don't know if it's worth the slot. I'm not sure about surgical either. Yeah, glyphs aren't great. Do you think you'd rather keep those? Yeah, I'm not a, the the timer breaks are pretty bad against the Cordals, but ideally we should be taking those out with our Renin Sixes and our removal packages that we have. Let's try it this way. This hand seems far too slow and way too many lands. This seems better. Keep this and we'll pitch a blood braid. I think we just want to take the soul herder here, right? We it's just too much to deal with later on. run out this Bob they're gonna most likely purge it or path it but we got to get those out of their his hand eventually Which is fine. I think I just want a blood braid here. Um, Tron will pro I, my guess is Tron's probably gonna start up like an hour and a half or so because we're playing humans next uh, per request and then after that we'll jump into Etron. So I would probably say 10 o'clock or so would be pretty safe. What's up and out at 97? Thank you for the follow. much appreciated. Okay, so. We know they have a planes in hand along with that purge. 
We could force them to pop that right now. Instant sorcery minus two, cast it. Them take this out, pitch the thicket. If we have time, I don't mind doing a mono green tron after that. Uh, we do a lot of mono green tron on the stream. Alrighty, and then I think we're just going to run this out. And then let's just run the snake out. I mean that carrier out. Yeah, I think mono green and that are both strong contenders. But a mono green Tron League is super fast. I usually jam one of those out in like no time at all. So depending on how fast we can go through it. Otherwise, um, we'll just have to play that another night instead of the e-tron. That's right, Inquisition then. They're going to path us. Coiling, coiling, veto. Don't really care about the veto, I guess. So let's just take out the coiling. We'll level this guy up a bunch. And we'll pass it over. If they drew a land, they're going to most likely drop that Thrag Tusk. Um, and then we're just going to level up Hex Drinker and put them on a three turn clock. What version of uh, Mono Green Tron are you on right now, Outslash? Are you on the uh, Karn Great Creator version or no? Braid, see what goodie we hit. Um, they just got a Dovin's Veto in hand. Let's not cast that. Yeah, I've been liking the uh, non Karn Great Creator version, unfortunately. I'm a big fan of Great Creator, but he's just not in a great spot right now with. Uh, us needing to mainboard so many things, and we need the cyborg slots um, in order to fight against Hogak. Gonna bounce their. Oh, I'm surprised. Or oh, they can't. So, what are they digging for here? 
I guess they can dig for a soul herder. Yeah! There's your hex drinker. Dan, it crushed it. Got us the game. Alrighty. So, let's wrap that video up.